Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Malika Arjun. All right, so today I'm gonna continue with our previous session or, or previous class where we took a couple of questions, very, very interesting questions, what I posted in our Telegram group or on my WhatsApp traders. So I already posted a bunch of questions, you know, and my last session I had completed uh, question number one to five, where I answered uh, in detail about each of those questions, how you can deal with and how you can answer if those questions comes in uh, in an interview. Right now, I'll today continue with the question number six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we'll take we'll take a couple of questions and see how it goes. And remaining rest of the questions, we will con touch base in our uh, next session or next episode, right? And then, okay, let's get started with this question number six. So this question number six, uh, you know, I'm gonna uh, take around five, six questions in this today's session. I'll explain from the scratch how you need to answer and then what are the remediation you need to take it and what is your response is going to be if the same questions comes in a, in an interview, right? So before I get started with this today's session, if you are new to my channel, always go back to YouTube, search for Malik 34 and then please do subscribe. If you like my videos, please give a thumbs up and then please share with your friends and colleagues, right? And then this is our DBA challenge three where uh, we answered question number one to five. And then now I'm, I'm gonna continue with the uh, question number six onwards, right? Let's get started here now. So question number six goes like this. So what are the best practices to minimize the downtime during the patching? Uh, like this is a common question, right? As a DBA, the patching activity is going to be one of the common activities. Each and everyone has to do it on a quarterly basis because Oracle strongly recommend to apply the patches on a regular basis. And in fact, Oracle will release the patches on quarterly basis. Every quarter, every three months, Oracle will release the patches like, you know, John, April, July, and October. These are the four quarters where I can release the patches. And then it's a, our DBA job or DBA duty to apply those patches, right? And not only the quarterly patches, also sometimes there's a bug fix, merge patches, one-up patches, interim patches, so many patches are there. So we need to, based upon the what bug we're hitting, we need to apply the patches. So it, coming back to this original questions, how you can minimize this downtime for the quarterly patches? So you are going to patch, you are going to planning to patch your uh, you know databases on on quarterly basis or on half yearly basis or once in a year you have to patch your system. So you are planning it out, and then what are the remediation? What are the uh, precautions you are going to take it in order to minimize the downtime? So first thing is it should be always recommended to go for a rolling patching in case of rack. If you have a rack. No need of a downtime at all. You can go with the rolling patching. So we have a different types of patching method here, rolling, non-rolling, hybrid. So rolling means complete online activity. We're going to patch one node at a time. Non-rolling means it's kind of a complete downtime. We're going to shut down all the database cluster nodes. We're going to patch everything in parallel. So that's a non-rolling. Hybrid means if you have multiple nodes and you know you can continue with the two nodes or three nodes or four nodes in a bunch of uh, you know slots that kind of a rolling and on a few of the nodes, you can take it as a rolling, few of the nodes, you can take it as a non-rolling. So in case of Excel data, you can take DB nodes as a rolling and storage cells as a non-rolling. So there's a hybrid model, you kind of a mix match, rolling and non-rolling. You can, you can define it whatever way you want to patch it. Right, and the second interesting point is try to use out of place patching to minimize the downtime. For example, you have Oracle Home 1 and Oracle Home 2, uh, or else you're going to patch your Oracle home where 10 databases are running. So you can patch Oracle home two, or you can clone that Oracle home one as a Oracle home two. You can switch all the database to Oracle home two, and then the patching is done. So with kind of uh, no need to get a downtime, more downtime, right? Uh, your database, all 10 databases will be up and running on Oracle home one. You just clone that Oracle home one as a Oracle home two, and then you can patch that Oracle home two. Once the patching is done, you can switch all the database from Oracle Home 1 to Oracle Home 2. And then it will be very, very less downtime on that. Once you switch it, you can run your data patch. But again, there are some considerations. If the listeners are running on Oracle Home 1, you need to change it to your listener to Oracle Home 2. And uh, uh, if there are multiple uh, uh, databases running with multiple listeners, and uh, if the uh, you know each of those listeners are running with the different, different ports, and then once you want to start your listener on the other server, you should be make sure that of which listeners you are going to migrate it and which services you are going to migrate it, which port you're going to use it. So those are like you know, remediations. Those are the considerations you have to take it before uh, you go with this option. But this is widely used option. Like, you know, if you like, you have like you know, one database running on one Oracle home using one single port on that, just copy all the entire Oracle binaries, clone it, and then patch it. 
and then start your listener there and then start your database there so that like that you know you can use this downtime do all the pre patch uh, activities well in advance the pre patch activities includes your patch assessment patch plan patch download patch staging and pre checks so all this you can do it in a well in advance like you know patch assessment four weeks in advance patch plan two weeks in advance patch download patch staging and pre checks at least one week in advance right take a db and oracle home backup one day before the patching window gather the stats on the dictionary object fixed object one day before the patching compile all the invalid object one day before the patching and then always patch your dr database first if needed uh, do a switch over and then the patch the new dr after the switch over and then run the data patch at your database level so this is uh, other one of the remediation to avoid your downtime and then always it's recommended to follow your stlc life cycle to do any patching activities like you know starting with the development test uat prod so these are like you know few of the best recommendations you know to to do the patching and to minimize the downtime right hope that is that that's clear and then moving to the next question that is question number 7 my rman backup used to take 5 hours till yesterday and then all of a sudden it is running more than 10 hours today how you will troubleshoot this scenario this is one of the common questions or uh, you know regularly asked questions in most of the interviews right so very very first and foremost thing why that backup is started taking long time so first thing you have to check is whether somebody has disabled bct at your database level so you have to check go and check bct is enabled or disabled if the bct is enabled and then if somebody physically removed your the bct file at your os level check that one bct file right and then check the backup location where the backups is happening nfs san nas or asm or local file system where it is happening just check that storage and then check the io performance or the load on those particular mount point where the backup is happening and the disk where the mount point is mounted for backup check that io performance of those disk and then the load on that particular disks and once you get it like there's a huge io then you will understand okay that disk might be poor performance or this might be using a lot of ios because of some other services or processes we can closely work with our linux team or the unix team to look into that why those many ios on that particular disk which processes are using those disk is there any zombie processes or is there any other uh, some third party uh, you know processes or third party software using the ios on that disk so we need to avoid those kind of scenarios here right so that's what you need to check always disk io where the backup is happening check the network or packet drop between the database and the storage server if suppose you are using a nfs or san or some remote storage server which is mounted as a nfs mount point on your database server you need to check the nfs or the packet trace or the packet drop between that storage server and your database server how the throughput is whether it is using a 1 gig network 10 gig network whatever the network bandwidth high what is the highest maximum bandwidth you have it between that storage and then the oracle host check it out and then any packet drops and then is there any whether it's using a proper throughput or not proper protocol or not proper uh, you know uh, interface or not check all of them and then make sure that you know there is no there is won't be any network uh, bottleneck or network throttling here and then check the load on the database server and then come back to your database server check the load how much load it is currently going under whether it is 10% 20% 100% 200% check the database load server using a top command or you know or so many other commands you can use them and then check the load make sure that there is no load on the server and then check the load at your database level like is there any export job is running is there any database loader uh, sql dr yes, database loader direct path load is happening at your database level is there any export or import is happening at your database level during the rman backup check those uh, tasks are happening at your database level or not right and then other four important is regularly do a gather stats on your fixed object and then the dictionary object like you know execute dbms gather stats and then execute dbms gather fixed object stat these are very very important command uh, these are very very important gather stats command where uh, improve your rman backup and improve your rman restore performance and then backup performance so you have to do it regularly like you know at least a weekly once or monthly once right and then uh, check whether uh, there is any modification in your rman script from yesterday till today what is the happened in your rman script Has somebody changed your rman script like you know reducing the number of channels or uh, reducing the backup type you know backup set or image copy or incremental merge is there any change in the backup script that you can check it out 
if somebody reduce the uh, you know number of our main channels yesterday to till yesterday it used to you have like number of channels 20 and all of a sudden today somebody has changed it to 10 because of that you know our main might be taking a lot of time check that one and then the check the db level any changes are happened like you know uh, db level uh, uh, somebody has reduced the cpus and then the processors or some of the performance parameters at my database level right so that might also impact here and check at os level it's whether any changes happen to your os level like you know os patching or the cpu reduction or the memory reduction at os level so all these things you can verify it out and then take appropriate action on that right all right uh, moving to question number 8 a user is running a select query on a employee table which is uh, you know going to fetch 100 gb of data but my sgi is only 10 gb how that entire 100 gb is going to fit into my sgi and then given to that end user right so very very interesting questions and most of times they don't ask these questions in in any of the interview so the simple answer is it may or may not go under full table scan based upon the select query how much data it's going to fetch it out based upon that it go select query uh, it, it may go full table scan or uh, you know uh, index scan whatever it is like you know doesn't matter for me it may or may not go full table scan based upon the select query what amount of data it is returning whether 10% or 20% or 30% or 100% data is going to return based upon that where condition your select query will go under table full table scan or the index scan index range scan so but the point here is when you are fetching 100 gb data if your sg or buffer cache is 10 gb so you are not going to put, uh, fill this uh, put this entire 100 gb data into that 10 gb sg right it's not possible what oracle intelligently do it will fetch the data in terms of chunks or bunch uh, and then pass it to that server process and server process will provide it to that end user so you know for example if you are fetching 100 gb data it can be divided into 5 gb chunk of data and then each time it will fetch that 5 gb chunk of data and then give it to the server process and then server process will give it to that end user and then it may go for 5 gb into 20 times it may fetch 100 gb of data it will be like bunch of data it will to uh, pull it at one time from the data file and then give it to the end user kind of a direct path read you're going to read the direct data from the disks or the data files and then it will give it back to the end user so it doesn't matter whether you have a 5 gb sga 10 gb sga 20 gb sga because sga will never come into picture here because the entire uh, your server process will take care of this you know uh, getting that data in terms of chunks or in terms of bunch of data and then giving back to the end user right that's a very very interesting questions right coming to interesting question number 9 uh, i am doing a table export which is of 1 terabyte in size but my database has a 10 gb sga how the export will be you know work internally is there any dependency between that export and sga or my buffer cache so very very interesting right uh, how that is export will work data pump uses the direct path load first thing data pump data pump or the export import uses the direct a uh, path load direct path load your sga or buffer cache will never come into picture it will directly uh, load the data into your database or it likely pull the data from your database so export and import directly loading the data directly pulling the data without involving your any of your buffer cache right that's a direct path direct path load or direct path read and then it does not matter size of uh, you know data being exported or data being imported if you do export or import whatever the size of the data doesn't matter whether you do export or import whether 1 terabyte 10 terabyte doesn't matter we are using a direct path load or direct path read where sga will not come into picture and we are not writing anything to buffer cache by for your for doing my export or import i'm not writing anything into my buffer cache we are using a direct path read direct path load so my buffer cache doesn't comes into picture here so whatever the sga size 10 gb 20 gb 30 gb doesn't matter for me when i'm doing export and import in nutshell there are no dependency between your data pump and then the buffer cache however however there are few memory component and database parameters that will impact your export and import operations for example disk sync io whatever the parameter is set at your database level that will directly and indirectly impact your export and import db block checking and db block checksum stream pool size all these parameters are directly or indirectly impact your database export and import so you should be very very careful what value or what parameters are set for this particular parameters inside your database right so that's about export and imports and then what's the relation between my export import with my sgi buffer cache 
right going to the next question that is question number 10 probably i will stop it here after this question and then further more questions will take it in our next session right so coming to this last question uh, question number 10 what are the rman optimization parameter how you will improve your rman backup performance or in fact how you can improve your rman restore performance right uh, anything it may be the first and foremost thing make sure that rman optimization is set to on or off based upon the need if you make it rman optimization on so rman will ignore read only table spaces if there are 10 table spaces are read only rman will never look for those table spaces it will ignore that and it will continue with the rest of the backups that's the one thing it has to be decided by you whether you can enable this optimization at your rman setting level rman optimization is on or off you can set it or enable it based upon the need enable or disable your bct so one of the very very important parameters enabling bct is always always gives a good performance good improvement in your backup performance always make sure that enable your bct set a proper rman channel based upon the cpu based upon how many cpu you have at your os level how many cpu are allocated to your database level calculate everything and then based upon that you can allocate the proper rman channels you have a 10 cpus in a server and your rsm is running your database is running and then out of the 10 cpu what you can do you can provide two cpu for your os operation you can provide two cpu for your database and uh, asm operation remaining six cpus you can assign uh, six channels like one cpu equal to one channel like for example in this example what i gave 10 channels you have it out of the 10 channels give two channels for your os operating system and then remaining two channels for your asm and database operation and then remaining six channels you can assign six cha- six rman channels sorry uh, six 10 cpu out of the 10 cpu two cpu for your os operation two cpu for your asm and database operation remaining six cpu you can allocate for six channels so that's how you can calculate how many database were running how many cpus are available inside your database how many cpus are available inside your os uh, put it all together and then you know define your rman channels that will directly impact your uh, you know that directly improve your rman performance and directly it will impact your rman backup timing and backup performance we cannot blindly set the rman channels more channels or less channels use the proper rman backup type for example backup as a backup set or image copy or incremental merge based upon the database type what kind of database you have it whether you have a big file table space whether you have a, a all the small file table space and then where your database is running ax linux windows based upon that what type of database it is rag database or stand alone database based upon that you can set the proper you know backup type right and then enable and disable your rman backup compression and encryption so based upon the need you can enable the compression and encryption that also will give the better performance and using a section size in case of big file table space if you are using a big file table space of 1 terabyte 2 terabyte data file in that case it is advisable to use a section size so that will give a better performance all right so that's it for today uh, probably we can take uh, further questions in our uh, next sessions until then uh, thank you guys uh, take care bye bye